topic of this live stream is claiming the live life. If you read the title, I've also put a poll up to ask the viewer if they possess a correct claim of the live life. And if you think it's correct, how do you know it's correct? So if you want to look at that poll, put your answer in there uh, so I can get a sense of how many folks on TikTok actually know what a claim of the live life is or even know what correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar is. As you may or may not know, I put on a seminar at the beginning of August that uh, a bunch of people signed up for, and I showed them how to create a correct sentence structure on the spot, boom, spontaneously. How to do that under duress. How to create a claim using correct grammar. Positioning your facts with correctness. I showed a bunch of people how to do that in a seminar. And I was thinking about doing another seminar. And as there are three parts to correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, they're all contained in the name. First, there's the correct sentence structure communication, then there's the parse, and then there's the syntax. Well, the next webinar, I was going to do a parse webinar, but then I got to thinking, most folks don't even know what a claim of the live life is. So maybe I should do a webinar or a seminar on the claim of the live life. Here's the thing. I don't think anyone, this is my personal position, I don't think anyone should have to pay money to create a claim of the live life. I know that there's individuals out there that charge hundreds of dollars to sell you a claim of the live life. Not going to mention any names, but I know they're out there. I don't agree with that. Prior to 2018, more specifically prior to the summer solstice of 2018, it was unheard of to even think about paying money for a claim of the live life. It was available for free for anybody who wanted, and it still is available for free to anyone that wants to create their own claim of the live life. My live life claim has gone through many incarnations, corrections. Bottom line is I created it myself as the authority of my construct and the author of my claim of the live life. But there are folks out there that are selling live life claims for hundreds of dollars and they're not correct. Grammatically, they're not correct. And also with the witness mechanics, they're not correct. Because folks, what is a claim of the live life? In the context of quantum grammar, a claim of the live life is when three live life claimants come together to witness another live life claimant. Meaning three folks come together and those three folks have live life claims and they autograph and thumbprint another live life claimant's document to witness it. Meaning they are putting their certification out into the cosmos that yes, this live life claimant is indeed a live creature. They're not dead. They're alive. That's basically what it is. That's basically what it means. Are you a cop? Absolutely not. That reminds me of a funny story. Back in the day when I was ripping and running, folks would come up to me and say, you know what? If there's an undercover cop, if you ask them if they're a cop, they have to answer you truthfully. If you're one of the people that believe that, then... <laughs> Good luck. Because if a cop is undercover, they would never tell you they're an undercover cop. That's just goofy. So, and that's another part of the whole, uh, I guess, the programming that 
most of us have been subject, subjected to all our lives in the authoritarian construct of this fiction system is to just trust authority. Even though the fiction system, the government, blah, 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 they lie continuously. They continuously screw us over. Yet there's still a large amount of people that still trust them. Well, yeah, they screwed us over, but they have our best interests at heart. Really. <laughs> foolishness is what I say it is. It's foolishness. And that's the whole point of getting a claim of the live life is that it, if you have the knowledge of the grammar, if you have closure on quantum grammar and you possess a claim of the live life, it gives you the tools to extricate yourself from the fiction system. You can still deal with it, but it takes you out of that and gives you authority over... No, not, it doesn't give you authority. It enables you to take authority over your own construct. The only individual that can give you, really, that can give you authority over yourself is yourself. That's the be all end all. Can I fake my own death for money? I don't know, that sounds like a personal question. Can you? I can't tell you what you can or can't do. Only you can do that. Have you tried talking to a mental health specialist? Have I tried? <laughs> I don't know. Do you have personal experience with that? It sounds like you might. Do you suggest it? Did it work for you? Wow, since I turned off the, the live stream moderation thing, a lot of trolls are getting in here. That's pretty crazy. That's all right, though. Because I'm speaking to those people who already, you know, have a rudimentary idea of what it is that I do. Um, those people coming in trolling, I mean, they're probably just doing their little TikTok thing, scrolling through here and trying to find a place to antagonize people or something. It's a, uh, no, there is not a shorter name for it. The correct name for the grammar is correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Although some people do call it quantum grammar, the correct name is correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Is this part of sovereign citizenry? Absolutely not. Sovereign citizenry is a misnomer. It is an oxymoron. You cannot be sovereign and be a citizen at the same time. Okay, now five times fast. You go ahead. I say it enough times in a day. I don't need to keep repeating it, bro. <laughs> That's a good gauge. If I don't know if anybody here watches any other people who are involved in what I do or do similar things to what I do. If you hear someone say correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, or they attempt to say it and they screw it up, like they mumbled, like bumble their words or they don't say it right, that means that they don't have very much experience in saying it. Because I've been doing this for since February of 2018, going on six years. I've been doing this every day, teaching people in the confidential. I got over almost 900 videos on my YouTube channel that I've created with this grammar, talking about this grammar. So I do it on a daily basis. That's why it just rolls off my tongue because I do it every day. You watch people that try and do it and they fumble over their words. It means that they don't know what they're talking about. Do you know what a sovereign is? Do you know what it means to be a sovereign? Literally, in the sense of the word, like a sovereign nation or something, sovereignty means that you create your own money. You don't use other people's money. You have your own money. You have your own source of fuel, your own source of food. You have your own land that has a clear chain of title. You have a domicile that is yours and you're not paying tax to anybody. 
That's what it means to be a sovereign. And there is no such thing, as far as I know. No single individual, I can say that. I once had a, a student who uh, I explained this to them and they said, well, you know what? I claim spiritual sovereignty. And I thought about that, you know, it's like, well, that's, that's cool. If you want to claim that, that's fine. You can claim spiritual sovereignty, of course. Because I mean, how are you going to certify what a spirit is? In the same way that you can certify what a tomato is. You can't. So, I mean, you can claim whatever you want to, as long as you can back it up and prove it. And that brings me back to the topic of this live stream, the live life claim. That's the whole point of the live life claim is to get certification for yourself. That you are indeed a live creature. In order to use this grammar technology, which I'll explain that real quick. What is correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar? It is a mathematical interface on grammar. It's a grammar technology that was introduced and published to the public by the late Colin David Eiffel Wynn Colin Miller in 1988. Okay? It's a technology. In the same way that 1 plus 2 equals 3, 3 minus 2 equals 1, the grammar technology works the same way. For the facts, of the facts, are with the facts, of the facts, with the facts, by the facts, period. Cause, concern, verb, possessive, concern, possessive authority. For, of, verb, with, of, with, by. 1 plus 2 equals 3, 3 minus 2 equals 1. And uh, if it were easy, then everybody would be doing it. Everybody on this live stream would know what it is and what it does and how to do it, if it were easy, but it's not easy. It's a commitment, it's very hard, it's very difficult, it's very trying and challenging. That's why only the 1% of the 1% of the 1% are actually ever gonna learn this and be successful with it because it takes such a commitment and it takes cojones. You can't be a snowflake or a, a weeping willow and do this stuff, man, because uh, if you choose this road, you're certainly going to take your lumps in being successful with it. There is no easy way about it. I use the analogy of martial arts, which for most of my life I've done. Um, I started out with Shotokan karate for a couple years, and then I joined a, a boxing gym and got my ass beat by Puerto Ricans when I was in my late teens, early 20s. And then I started learning jujitsu and a little wrestling and some Muay Thai and some grappling, some catch wrestling and um, trained for, for a long time. And I found out that in order to be successful in learning how to fight, you have to fight. It doesn't just magically appear out of anywhere, out of nowhere when you need it. And it's the same thing with correct sentence structure. You have to do it every day. You have to practice it. Keep getting better, sharpening your skills so that it is ready to go when you're ready to use it. And you never know. Well, I mean, the more experience you get, the more you know when you're going to need it. And you can be prepared. Like me, I pretty much know when I'm going to need to use it and when I don't. Out in the public. But I've been doing it for a long time, so. What is the ultimate goal for this? Well, Steve, that's up to you. I mean, what's your goal? Everybody has different goals. My personal goal with this live stream, to be specific, is uh, to see if there are actually people on TikTok who want to learn this grammar. Now, I'm not here to give people a reason to do that. I'm just here to find the ones that already have a reason to do it. Whenever you feel something, touch, taste, smell, hear, whatever, whenever you sense something and you feel something, words pop into your head. You really have no control over it. 
When you see something, words pop into your head to try and categorize what you see. Words. Therefore, words pretty much control what you do. And you have no control over the words that come in and out of your head. I'm sure everybody out there has had the experience of having unpleasant thoughts and they won't go away. It's because you don't have any control over your grammar. If you learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, one of the benefits of it is that you now can become an authority of the words that come in and out of your head. Because you know what a fact is. You may think you know what a fact is right now, but I bet you don't. I bet you don't. It isn't just what you say it is. It's something you have to be able to certify. You have to have a continuance of the evidence to prove what a fact is. And that's the premise behind this grammar. The be all end all of it. Facts. And once you learn this grammar and you are able to establish what a particle of negation is in your grammar, just like in, uh, to bring up this tomato again, this is a tomato that was grown in a garden. Okay? There are no particles of negation in this tomato. There are no additives. There's no GMOs, no nothing, no pesticides, herbicides, nothing. It's just a tomato. Now, you can get a huge tomato at a supermarket that has been modified. That has GMOs in it. It has particles of negation. It has poison in it. This doesn't. This is like correct sentence structure. There's no modification. There's no poison in it. That's the analogy between food and correct sentence structure. So once you learn correct sentence structure, now you have the capacity to be a steward of your words. You say what words come in and out of your psyche because you know what a fact is. And then in turn, you become a steward of your contracts because everything is contract. And that all starts with a claim of the live life that has correct postal mechanics, correct banking mechanics, correct grammar mechanics, correct flag mechanics. This is my claim of the live life. It has the correct postal mechanics. It has the correct flag mechanics. It has the correct banking mechanics. And the correct grammar mechanics. It has three witnesses and thumbprints. That's the claim of the live life. So if you, those of you out there that are wondering what it is, I just showed you what it was. Let's see. Uh, I put a poll up. I'm trying to see who. Okay, no. Oh. There, I started the poll. Marcus, I don't inbox anybody. If you want to contact me, you can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Because that's the way a contract works, my friend. If I wanted something from you, of course I would contact you. But I don't. But if you want something from me, like if you want to ask me questions, or if you want to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, then it would be contingent upon you to contact me through my email address, which you can find in, in my bio, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. I just ask that you please include your full correct name. You know my full correct name, colon Jason I from Matthew Colin Glass. I just ask that you share your correct name in that confidential email. And then uh, you can apply for a workshop if you want to. I've been teaching correct sentence structure workshops since February of 2018 to hundreds of people all over the earth. Um, 
And there are also almost 900 videos on my YouTube channel that you can study. Everything I teach in the workshops is available for free on my YouTube channel if you, if you choose to study that way. Most people that come to me to, that want to learn the grammar, they want me as a guide because, of course, it's going to be faster if you have a teacher sitting right in front of you tailoring the educational process to you personally. That's basically what the workshops are. But if you want more information about that, you got to contact me, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Might as well go through some other claims here. Why not, right? <laughs> Have my language tutor claim. Port authority claim. Fate writ volition claim. Domicile contract claim. Grammar auditor, document contract court authority claim. Now this claim right here, for example, this for my construct is the equivalent of what it would mean to be a federal judge in the fiction. But I don't use the word judge because that is a fiction term for me. I don't use that word. I mean, you can use it if you want to, but I choose not to. I use the word document contract court authority, meaning I am the authority of the document contract court because everything is contract and this is a court and I am the authority of it because I wrote it. That's how authority works, folks. Notice in the word authority, there's the word author. Author, it. It's a contract with the author, me. I'm the author. You can do the same thing. Anybody can do the same thing if you have the knowledge. Authority comes from knowledge. You have to know what it is you're doing. That's why when you make a claim, you have to be able to prove it. You can't claim a title and not perform on that title. So to get back to the original topic, I was talking about the claim of the live life. I was thinking about, I was going to do a seminar on the claim of the live life, but here's the issue. As I mentioned before, I don't agree with people charging money for claims of the live life. I don't agree with buying a claim of the live life. That's why I say that everyone can just create their own claim of the live life if you just learn the grammar. But very few people, only the 1% of the 1% of the 1% actually want to learn the grammar, actually possess the tenacity and the intestinal fortitude it takes to learn this stuff. Very few people. So that, that, therein lies the dichotomy, the contradiction of the thing. Most people just want to be spoon fed. They want it easy. If, it, if it's not easy, they're, they're just going to go on to something else which is fine, but that's why the fiction system is not afraid of correct sentence structure at all. Because they know that most of you out there are not gonna do, they, that you do not have what it takes to learn it. Those aren't my words. I'm paraphrasing the fiction system how they feel about you. They think that. I know this from the experiences that I've had. That's why the people that actually do learn it are so successful with it. Because the fiction system doesn't want anything to do with them. Because if you're, if you're ripping people off, do you want to be called out onto the carpet and have it be known to everybody, the whole world, that you are actually ripping people off? Of course you don't. If you're a criminal... You want to keep that stuff under wraps. So that's why they leave people like me alone.
But that's the whole point of correct sentence structure also is to stop bureaucratic trespass. Stop being ripped off. Contract is by consent. And that's what the live life claim is. It is a contract. A document, contract, postal, vessel, court, and you. Of which you are the authority. So how do you function in the public with all the corruption? What corruption is that? You have to tell me what corruption you're referring to that I would encounter in the public. Because when I walk through the public, it's a it's a case by case basis. On the average, people aren't out there trying to rip me off. And if I see someone that thinks that they're trying to rip me off, I, I already know that. I can see that a mile away and I just choose not to contract with them. Contract is by consent. So I have no problems navigating through the public because most people, fortunately, are not out to rip other people off. Most people, at least from my personal experiences of being on this earth for 51 plus years. Most people just want to contract fair and square. I think it's a misconception if someone thinks everyone is out to rip them off. That says more about the person that thinks people are out to rip them off than it does about everybody else. I'm not saying don't be cautious. You got to vet people. But again, contract is by consent. If you agree to a contract and you get ripped off, I mean, yes, the other contract party is partially accountable for that. But you're the one that's most accountable because you agreed to it. You, your, your vetting process needs to be looked at because it's up to you to vet the people you contract with. If you're claiming live life contracts, jobs, courts, documents, if you're claiming live life contracts, jobs, courts, documents, not sure what you're saying there, quantum weirdo. I don't know if that's a question or, or what that is. I have a claim of the live life. All of my documents are contracts. I didn't really say anything about jobs. I did talk about courts because the four corners of a document is a court. And a document, well, that's self-exclamatory. So I'm not sure what you're asking there, bro. Got to be more specific, please. And all this stuff is so much more easier if you have closure on your grammar. There are three principles that I teach in relation to correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. The balance of the honor and the, of the grace the position of the peace and of the neutrality and the maintenance of the rule one and the rule equal. Now you can use these principles in everyday life using plain, simple English. The only time correct sentence structure comes into play is if you're being trespassed upon, if there's been a bureaucratic trespass or damage being done and you want to stop that damage. This it's a sea pass sea treaty. Okay? I'm the authority of this. It has the correct postal mechanics, the correct banking mechanics, the correct flag mechanics, the correct credentialing mechanics, red light, green light. And it also has my contract drogue timelines on it that I use uh, most frequently. And it also has the live life claim number and my favorite volition claim number on it, of which I am the authority. Okay? This is sea pass sea treaty. This is a fiction passport.
This has an all cap name on it. But as you can see, I have autographed it using my correct name and putting my live life claim number on it. And I put postal mechanics in there because this is the authority of this. This is towing this as a salvage because this is a derelict vessel. This has incorrect grammar on it. It's not my name that's on there. Somebody else made that name, not me. I didn't create that name. However, I did create this name. So this is the authority and this is a derelict vessel. I'm towing it as a salvage. So when I travel from place to place, I will present this and then I will present this as the authority of this as towing it as a salvage. And I explain that. Because I don't want any shipwrecks to occur. I don't want any damage to occur from this derelict vessel. So it's towing it as a salvage. I don't know how much people know out there about, about the laws of salvage and how they work. But that's just a very small example of how that works. It would also work for a driving license or whatever you, else you want to use. But again, you have to have closure on the grammar in order to do that stuff. You have to have closure on the grammar in order to do that stuff, what I just showed you. Because it's not going to work if you just do what I just did, if you just imitate what I just did at a, at a border checkpoint or at a TSA checkpoint. They're not going to believe you if you don't know what you're talking about. Let's say for the average person they need to keep a job, aren't the documents at a job fraud? Well, first you have to learn the grammar, quantum weirdo. And then you would be able to answer your own question. Actually, I just told you how you can navigate through that if you choose. I just gave closure to that. But again, I feel like I don't think that you really know anything about correct sentence structure. Um, I don't know what you mean by average person. Anybody can learn this. They just have to take the time to do it. So let's replace the word average person with a person who doesn't know correct sentence structure. Well, of course, they're not going to be able to use it if they don't know it. You have to know it in order to do that. So if you, quantum weirdo, would actually take the time to learn the grammar, or at least get a rudimentary closure on it, the answer to your question would become quite apparent. But you're speaking to me as though, and this is just a guess, as though you just have a theoretical knowledge of the grammar. You think you know what it is, but I don't think you really do know what it is. And that just takes time on the water, man. You just got to learn it. It took me 2,000 hours of study, consistent daily study, before I could even use this stuff. And that was back in 2017. It's definitely a commitment, but it's definitely very rewarding as well once you get to it. It's like walking up a down escalator doing this stuff. If you're doing anything except for putting one foot in front of the other, you're going backwards. You have to do it every day until you reach that critical mass point where it clicks in your head. And now all of a sudden it becomes like riding a bicycle. You never lose it. But it takes a long time to get to that point. And I'll tell you what, anybody that, that actually takes the time to learn this stuff, they are not average. They are definitely not average. Because the average person won't learn this. They won't take the time to learn it. Most talk about state national. What state is that? State of happiness, state of bliss, state of depression. See, to me, man, those are all fiction terms. State, national is an adjective pronoun. State is tangible contract. National is tangible contract. That's grammar modification. State is coloring national. I don't deal with any of that stuff. I just deal with correct grammar. I mean, nothing, no offense or intended towards the people that, that do that stuff in common law and stuff like that. That's cool. But that's all part of the fiction system. I don't have anything to do with that. It's not necessary for me. I do know people that have success with that stuff. And bless them, you know. I'm a big fan of whatever works. See, for me, 
I, you know, a few years ago before I discovered quantum grammar, I was trying to learn common law and things like that, but it was just so overwhelming to me. I was like, my goodness, there's so much here, you know, it's like trying to study to become an attorney or something. And then I've, I ran into David Wynn Miller and then I saw quantum grammar and I was like, wow, if I can learn this, I don't even have to know anything about that other crap. And so that's what I focused my energy on. And I did. And so all that stuff's not necessary to me. It's not relevant to my everyday life. It's common law is basically using fiction against fiction. Fiction created it because there is modif there is grammar modification, language modification in those documents. Exactly same here. It just seemed like you're basically learning to be your own lawyer. I mean, you could use that analogy loosely, but what a lawyer is, think about what a lawyer is or an attorney. They're part of an exclusive club that the judge is also a part of. They speak their own language, right? So just as you said, you're basically learning to be your own lawyer. It's just using the same general concept that the fiction uses, only you're the authority now. Like me, I'm the authority of my own construct. I don't need a judge, I don't need an attorney, I don't need nothing like that. I am my own authority. And you can do the same thing if, if you learn the grammar. It's just using the same principles. Like in the fiction, you have a birth certificate. In the fact, you have a claim of the live life. In the fiction, you have a passport. In the fact, you have a C pass C tree. In the fiction, you have a foreign vessel and dry dock. In the fact, you have a document, contract, postal vessel, court venue. And you have your own one by 1.9 flag of the land during the time of the contract. Well, stop and correct. It's not your flag. It's not my flag. It's a flag. It's the grammar flag. There is no correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, copyright on that flag. None that I've ever seen anyways. There are people that claim to have that. But I've done videos on my YouTube channel, www.youtube.com forward slash Jason Matthew Glass. I've done videos ripping that apart. There is no correct grammar copyright claim on the flag. The flag is basically can be used by anybody that knows how to use it, that has the knowledge of how to use it. And that's the other thing about the flag mechanics. You have to have the constitution of the flag in order to use the flag. And you have to have a comprehension of that, which... The uh, flag constitution that I have was given to me by Colin David Ivan Colin Miller a few years ago, and I took that and I corrected it. I corrected the grammar on it, so I do have a correct grammar flag constitution. So what is the treaty about on the card you were showing? It's a sea pass sea treaty, meaning I come in as a peaceful and neutral vessel through the sea of space, S-E-A, of space, and then forward slash C, S-E-E -E hyphen treaty, C, it's a treaty of sensation, where I have the authority to see, to hear, to sense things. I'm peaceful and neutral. I can move through different venues if I so choose because I'm not there to cause harm, whether that's through whatever domains, even the holy C-S-E-E -E, domain, I can move through peacefully and neutrally and, and maintain safety of my vessel, ages of my vessel. But you have to have closure on, those, on that knowledge. And it all starts with the grammar. So again, quantum weirdo, if you would take the time to learn the grammar, then you would be able to answer all these questions that you're asking me. But that's up to you, you know. Everybody has their own choice. They have to have a reason to do this. If you don't have a reason to learn the grammar, then you probably won't learn. <clears throat> Very few people can learn something and not be interested in it. Like for me, I have to be interested in something in order to learn it. And again, with this stuff, for me, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it, for sure. Just like martial arts. But any of the documents that I showed you, 
on this live stream, you can create yourself with your own authority. Do you also need an understanding of prefixes and stuff? Well, yes, that is part of correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, Kevin. There are three parts to correct sentence structure. Correct sentence structure, communication, parse, and syntax. The part you're talking about, about prefixes, those are particles of a word, so that falls under the parse part of it. And the way that you would do that is you would look up the particles or syllables of a word in an etymology dictionary. And then you can find out there whether uh, they are negative or not. And any prefix or suffix that is past tense or future tense negates the word because correct sentence structure is a grammar of the now space. What's happening right now? It's not in the past. It's not in the future. It's right now. So if you find any prefixes or suffixes that negate the now space, those are no contract words. So what I was thinking about doing is my next seminar is going to focus on parse, since Kevin brought up parse, is going to focus on parse. I'm going to show you how to, how I parse words, how I find the earliest nativity root meanings of the particles of the word, and then in turn, credential them, whether they're no contract or positive performance. And then also how I create my correct sentence structure, finite means in my dictionary, which by the way, my dictionary has over almost 2000 correct sentence structure meanings in them. It's got over two, almost 2000 words and it has a styles manual also, which my dictionary governs my construct. And if you're going to use correct sentence structure and you're a live life claimant and you have closure in the grammar, then of course you would have your own dictionary as well. Because if you use someone else's dictionary, then you've given someone else jurisdiction over your words. You're using someone else's meanings, not your meanings. See how that works? So yeah, that, that I think will be the next seminar is the parse. And then I'm also going to try and put together the live life claim seminar, which is the title of this live stream. But I'm going to have to vet people for that. <clears throat> In order for people to attend the Live Life Claims Seminar, they're going to have to go through a heavy vetting process. They're going to have to take a test to show that they have closure, at least a rudimentary closure on, on the grammar. And if they pass the test and they have a rudimentary closure on the grammar, then they can attend the seminar. And then I will show them how to create a claim of the Live Life safely. Because if you don't have closure on the grammar, then a live life claim is going to do you no good. It's actually probably going to get you into trouble if you try to use it and you don't know what the hell you're doing. It's all about the safety of the vessel. I don't want anybody getting hurt out there. There are people out there right now, ladies and gentlemen, friends and neighbors, who are selling live life claims for almost 200 bucks a pop. And they're not correct. They only have one witness on them. And that one witness hasn't even witnessed the live life claimant. The grammar is incorrect, and they're sort of like conveyor belting these things, sending them out, and then people are going out and trying to use these things, and they don't know what they're doing, and they're getting in trouble. And that's not cool. But again, you know, people make their own choices. If you choose to pay for a claim of the live life from someone like that, that's your choice. That's a harsh reality. You have to know the terms and conditions of the contract. Read the contract. Think about something. Do you trust the other contract party? I don't expect anybody to trust me because you don't know me. The best way to vet me is to look at what's out there on social media. I got almost 900 videos, grammar videos on my YouTube channel that I've created since 2018. So if you take a couple hours and look through my stuff, pretty soon you're gonna see, well, this guy must, this guy seems to know what he's talking about. And that's my certification, as well as some of my other students that are out in the public, like Colon Ricardo, Colon Marseille, uh, Colon Ray's hyphen wisdom, he has a YouTube channel. 
one of my best students, he has material out there as well. So there are ways to certify what I say. Do you do the seminars on YouTube mainly? No, the, the seminar is in private. It's like a, an online seminar where the last seminar I did was on August 8th. And what happened was all the attendees went through a, a small vetting process and then I sent them a confidential link the day of the seminar and then it was a private Zoom room and then I used like a dry erase board and I did the seminar for about two hours and 45 minutes. That's how it worked. It's not on YouTube. It's not in the public. But there are over 800 public videos available to you if you want to study them. There is nothing hidden or secret. It's all out in the public. It's up to you if you want to learn it. <clears throat> so that's what I think I'm going to do. That's how I'm going to handle the Live Life Claim Seminar. If you want to attend it, if you want to learn how to create your own Live Life Claim, first you're going to have to certify your level of grammar knowledge. You have to have a foundation of grammar in order to create a live life claim and use it safely. Bottom line. However you choose to learn the grammar, that is up to you. You can learn it through my YouTube channel, studying those videos. You can do that for free on your own time. Or you can contact me, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a workshop. It's up to you. All right, Kevin, I look forward to that. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Well, I think that about wraps this one up. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Even the trolls at the beginning there, thank you for your comments, your, your chats. It's pretty funny. When you take the moderation off of the comments, you get some very interesting uh, people in here. If you want to look at any of my past TikTok live streams, go over to my YouTube channel, www.youtube.com forward slash Jason Matthew Glass, and go to the TikTok live stream playlist, and you can find all the live streams that I did right there. All right, that wraps it up. Peace. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, Contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like and I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs>